you've really overcome a lot over the last two years to get to this point. I know that in 2021, you were hit by a car. And um, I know that you talked about how it kind of gave you this new perspective on life and purpose. Can you talk about how that impacted you? Yes. Um, so after what happened in 2021, um, even on a race like yesterday, I, I did have quite a few race nerves yesterday morning, and that's not that's not very normal for me. Yeah. Um, but what I was able to think about was how awesome and what a blessing it is to be alive and to get to be on a star line next to all the people who I love being around. Um, and I really attribute a lot of that to picturing myself that morning and how thankful I was to have survived. Um, and that really is able to, you know, quell a lot of nerves um, that I think are important, but also can't overtake your psych your psyche. Um, so that really thankfulness to be alive and get to be here um, was something that I I know has gained me for the better yeah. uh, since then. Thank God that you know you're okay and you've recovered. It's so impressive how you've been able to significantly improve since then. How have you gotten so much better in your training? What's changed? Well, um, one, I think, you know, just having that ultimate gratitude to get to be here is really important. Um, I can pretty much tame things, any other kind of like, you know, if there is a negative thought or fear or like um, stress, just that gratitude really is able to overshadow those. Um, that helps. But um, I'm in a great training community and our sport is so technical that really it's one of those ones where unless you're really gifted, which I'm a, like, I'm a hard learner, it takes me a while. Um, I know that my, each year, each race, each morning, I learn things and I gain a lot of experience. Um, and being in my training environment at the University of Illinois with an amazing wheelchair racing coach, um, all of that contributes and it contributed a lot throughout that, pro that process. From a technical standpoint, have there been any small tweaks that you've made? Um, yes. So um, before Tokyo, I did actually, um, I went to smaller hand rings. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing I do attribute to getting a higher top speed. Higher top speed is really important in our sport. Um, and then after 2021, I did actually move into a different racing chair. That was a different seating position. Um, and while it wasn't what I was planning to do, it did while I was recovering and that was my only option to train in, um, I think I was able to just, you know, use my gratitude of being able to train to really learn wheelchair racing again in a new position. Um, and that has worked out really well for me, clearly. Yeah. So, so all four of the Americans that qualified for the Paralympics yesterday have all gone to the University of Illinois. Can you talk about how much pride you have in being part of that community? I have so much pride to be a part of that community. Um, the University of Illinois has such a long-standing history of adaptive sports, um, of not only adaptive sports, but then how that is translated into professional and just human quality of life um, in that we have some of those accessible college campus for people with disabilities. Um, it's just a community of understanding that people with disabilities are humans that need to live their best life. Um, and so to get to be there where so many, you know, incredible athletes have started and have come from, um, people who I learned from have trained there. I am, I owe, you know, everything I know now to those who come before me at the U of I. Um, my coach, who's incredible, Adam Bleakney, he's still there. Um, humbly, you know, encouraging us to be our very best versions of ourselves. Um, it's all really incredible to get to represent U of I and how it has impacted wheelchair racing.